man, oh man, do I love my Satan's Toilet Forge. It gets those little jobs done as heck, and when you're done with it, you just fold it right up and shove it under that musky futon. So convenient. This really isn't one of those builds where it's like, oh, I can't stand working with this thing anymore. <sighs> no, it really is a nice little forge. I just want to be able to work on bigger stuff if I need to. You probably noticed at this point, I pretty much stick with like railroad spikes and wrenches. You could see in the last video even when I was trying to heat up that lawnmower blade, it, it was barely getting past like red heat. And when you're working with railroad spikes and all that, it's perfect. It's actually, it's actually the bomb. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. But I want to do bigger stuff in the future and I think you guys would like to see me do some bigger stuff too. Some big old choppers and stuff. So this new forge is not gonna be able to like fold up and go under a musky futon, but I'm hoping that the, the advanced performance of it is gonna make up for the shortcomings of its uh, stash ability. I know I don't have much stash ability. The Satan's Toilet Forge used a cast iron camping skillet as the fire pot, fire pan. Wow, that was only like two inches deep. The new one I'm hoping is gonna have like five and a half maybe inches. I think the philosophy behind this is like the more air I already messed this up. The more hot coals that the air has to blow through, the hotter the air will be before it hits the workpiece. And that, that makes sense, right? I don't know. I think I'm making it better, maybe. I don't know. Well, here it is, guys. The forge upgrade, maybe. Hope you guys like it. At the time of recording this audio, I'm pretty deathly ill with the flu, so if my voice sounds like diarrhea, sorry about that. A couple years ago, I worked at Chipotle for like nine months, and one of the maybe two or three good things that happened the whole entire time I was there, there was one day that they were getting all new patio furniture, and they let me keep the metal bits of uh, the stuff that they were throwing out, so a few of the things that I scored were these table weights. These are the feet of the table, and they're really heavy, so the table doesn't fall over. Picture Captain America's shield, but like a quarter inch thick of steel. These things are... <coughs> <coughs> girthy. But because these are all for outdoor furniture, I'm pretty sure these are all galvanized. So I got them sitting in this campfire right here. I was hoping to burn off all of the galvanized layer because I plan on welding it later and I don't want to, you know, risk dying and stuff like that. So it ended up when I would burn it like this that the bottom half would kind of be galvanized, whatever you want to call it, and then I would have to flip it over and burn the other side of it. But even after all this, I still wasn't completely satisfied with the safety of it. So you'll, you'll see what I do from there. Now, this might seem like overkill, but I just took some time out of my day to read up on some galvanized horror stories and the sheer number of people that are like I thought I got all of it off and then next thing I know I'm in the hospital or like my grandfather thought he removed all of it with the angle grinder and then he went home and died in his sleep so I'm like what's another day of waiting in exchange for the rest of my life so I'm taking a play out of the book of Michael Cthulhu and building an elevated surface around my galvanized stuff now I'm gonna take it out and throw a tarp in there Now you've got a custom fitted bowl to fill up with distilled white vinegar. Watch out for that hard R. That YouTube bottle get ya. This is gonna take a lot. I bought six gallons. It was on sale at Jewel, 15 bucks for six gallons. Not bad. Oh, I'm gonna speed this up a little. Oh, I hope I have enough. Hmm. I'm gonna have to dilute it with some water. Took six gallons of vinegar and three of water. I'm gonna give this a full 24 hours to soak. It'll take about that long to figure out what to do with all these freaking bottles. All right, let's see this. Huh, that looks the same. Sheesh. I'm about to do a little mini time lapse here, but you'll notice that the whole surface of these plates is kind of flash rusting. You can already kind of see it on these plates back here. That's actually a good sign because the galvanized coating is anti-rust. So if the whole surface is rusting, that means we got the galvanized coating off. So I can now safely get to work on the design because I have no clue what this is gonna look like. Now I've taken one of those big old plates and I've carefully drawn it and cut out this shape that when you fold it up is going to make the bowl where all the coals rest in. So I'll carefully trace this out. It's gonna take a little bit of effort, but I'm gonna use my angle grinder and cut this shape out. This 
This stuff's thick, boy! I think this is gonna be perfect. I gotta remove these burrs though, because these things are razor sharp. I'm gonna go outside and see if I can flatten this on the pavement. This is gonna be loud as heck though. Pretty good. All right, this is the goofiest thing ever. I just tried heating up this line right here with some map gas and oxygen and it did absolutely nothing. So I think I'm literally gonna have to forge this forge on my forge. Hoy vey, pray for me. some effort. Now I trace that out and I'm gonna cut it. You know what? I'm gonna come at this one a little different. I'm gonna drill into it with a drill that's big enough that I can fit a jigsaw blade through the hole. And then I'm gonna try to cut it with one of these heavy duty jigsaw blades. Man, these tools are so cold, it like hurts to touch them. I just decided to buy some of these hand warmers though. I had no clue they were so affordable. You'd really think they could have come up with a better advertiser though. <laughs> Oh my gosh, this can't be happening. So I just got back from buying a brand new spool of flux core welding wire. And I'm telling myself, man, that stuff's expensive. It's like $18 a spool, geez. So I haven't used my welder in probably like a year, so I don't really remember how to do anything with it. And for some reason, I vaguely remembered having to loosen this bolt in order to put a new spool in there. So naturally, I took an impact driver to it. And uh, long story short, if you look here, these are all of the teeth from the gear that pushes the wire through the thing. I know there's a lot of people out there who could just hop on the internet and know exactly what parts they should be ordering to replace and all that, but unfortunately, I'm not that guy. I, I just make weapons in my garage, guys. I don't, I don't fix welders. I wish I did. On the bright side, though, I've got a brand new spool of wire for the next welder that I buy. Uh, I'm gonna tack weld all four corners. I think I'm also gonna try to put some work into filling in these gaps right here. What I wasn't really able to close up with the with the forging. Yeah, that should be pretty straightforward. having a lot more success just kind of stitching it together. You guys know I've never been a good welder. I think if I wanted to actually improve, I would have to take a class eventually. I'm, I'm just not getting the hang of it. But just for the purposes of building this thing, yeah, I think this like stitching kind of method is probably the best thing I can do at this point. Especially this here. That is a pretty sizable gap to try to fill up with weld. I think this is definitely my best bet at this point. In an effort to save some embarrassment, I could have gotten the angle grinder out with a flap disc and cleaned this all up before I showed you guys again. But honestly, you're never gonna see the underside of this thing anyways. So whatever. As long as it's gonna hold together, I'm cool with it. You know what though? That stitch welding was easy enough that I think I'm gonna go around the inside here and do the stitching there too. Now, I'm gonna be trying to make up financially for that welder for a while. So I'm gonna be cannibalizing my old forge. All right, that's going about there. So I'm gonna drill my new holes there. Now I'm gonna cut out three 35 inch sections of this angle iron. And now I'm gonna weld them on. Stand her up. <sighs> nice. It doesn't really fold up though, huh? Where do I put it? Oh, I know. Where did I 
爱歌。